Hi, I'm John Rinaldi, the director of WOW at Real Time Automation. Today, I'm going to talk about SIP security. This is my first, vi first video in a series. Um, this little shopping bag down here is really a, a supposed to be a lock, so uh, I just want to. I'm not much of, much for drawing. So uh, let's talk about this. So what is what is SIP security? SIP security is an architecture from the ODBA. And it's an architecture to secure I.O. networks, the, all of the networks that the ODBA supports with their SIP architecture, the uh, Ethernet IP, control net, compo net, device net. Ethernet IP is, being, is the first network where they've actually implemented SIP security. So why are we doing this? Why do, they, why do we care? Well, over the years, we've done a lot to secure what we call the north side of the controller, the enterprise, the internet, the cloud. Getting to a controller through those in that direction has typically gotten a lot harder. We've, we've added defense in-depth strategies. We've added a lot of security software. We've added a lot of capabilities there. But what we haven't secured is the I.O. networks. If you can get to an I.O. network, an Ethernet IP network, a Profinet network, a Modbus TCP network, you can pretty much do anything you want on that network. You can get into a controller, change values in the controller, you can go to a valve, turn valves on and off, start and stop drives, start and stop pumps. It, you're, you're wide open. And lots of people have access to your I.O. network. You've got vendors coming and going, IOT people, you've got corporate people coming and going, you've got all sorts of people, machine builders, got, and who knows what they're going to, if they plug into the wrong switch, or if even one of your people knowingly or un unknowingly plugs something incorrectly, and all of a sudden there's a path to the internet from your I.O. network, you're in trouble. So... SIP security is, is designed to counter all of these problems. And what specifically, it's supposed to do four things. Number one, it's supposed to do endpoint authentication. All right, what is that? Endpoint authentication means that when a controller talks to a device, both sides know what they, that the other side is who they say they are. The controller knows that this is really the valve I want to talk to. The valve knows that it's really the controller that's actually talking to me, not some outside entity. Then there's message authentication. Message authentication is that when messages are going on, that we know for certain that this message came from the controller, it didn't come from some outside entity. The controller knows that when it gets a response message from the, from the Ethernet IP device, that it really was generated by that device, not by some outside entity. And then the other two are integrity, making sure that we know the message, not, the message hasn't been changed as it come across the network. And the third, and the last thing is confidentiality. That's knowing that, that the, no one has, has been able to see what the contents of that message is. So those are the four things that we're trying to accomplish with SIP security. Now how does it do that? Well, I'm gonna, let's go and do a little quick review of, of Ethernet IP. In Ethernet IP we've got a controller. We call, it, we call a controller or the device that's making connections, we call that the scanner. And then we've got adapters, lots of adapters, valves, drives, all kinds of linear actuators, barcode readers, printers, all kinds of things. And that stuff's all connected by some kind of, by switch someplace. So that all that comes to the switch, controllers, talk to the switch, and so that's, a, that's our Ethernet IP network, adapters and, uh, and scanners. And now there's two kinds of messages that go across that network. Explicit messages and I.O. messages. The controller or PC is going to send an explicit message when it's doing some, when it's sending or trying to read some piece of information. So if it wants to know, for example, how many cycles has this valve completed? 
it would send an explicit message to do that. If it wanted to tell a drive, change the ramp up time from 10 seconds to 12 seconds, that would be an explicit message. And an I.O. message, of course, is just inputs from the, these adapters going back to the controller, outputs coming from the controller out to the adapter. Now, in Ethernet IP, we use two different transports to send these messages. Explicit messages use TCP, and I.O. messages use UDP. Now, the difference between those, of course, is that UDP, TCP messages are acknowledged. When a message goes from one point to another on a, using TCP, the endpoint says, yep, yeah, got it. UDP messages are essentially fire and forget. So now how is this stuff, how is this stuff secured? Well, we use, what's important to know is we're using just standard off-the-shelf security, the same stuff that's used in the IT world. We're using for the TCP messages, we're securing that with TLS, UDP messages with DTLS. TLS is all of the same stuff that you use every time you go to a website and you see HTTPS and the little lock. That means that you're secured with transport layer security. DTLS is just a variation of that that can, that can secure UDP side. So when you do that, if, there's, if somebody gets access to this network, some, some hacker guy, some outside entity, and wants to turn a valve on or see what messages are going, o going over that network, they will not be able to do it because that's going to be secured. So, so SIP security is trying to secure these, net these I.O. networks. Specifically, it's trying to secure the Ethernet IP first and then all the other ODBA SIP technologies. Now, when is this all going to happen? Well, Rockwell controllers are already shipping with SIP security built in. Now, we don't know, I, you know if you want to know specifically of you know, what controllers, go to your local distributor to find out. But, they, but right now, nobody's shipping adapters. But I expect that to change by the end of the year. I expect that Rockwell's going to make some big announcements and come out with a lot of SIP secure adapters in the future. So we need to get ready for that. If you're an end user, you need to start to figure out how we're going to manage this stuff because there's a lot more stuff going on. If you're a vendor, you need to figure out all the attributes of how are you going to accommodate this new technology and it's much more difficult than I made it seem here. There's a lot more complications. But RTA is here to help you. We've got a, uh, a URL here where there's a free gift. You can, get, you can get a number of stuff from us to help you with SIP security. And I'll have a number of videos coming forth in the future. We've got a, a URL, rtaautomation.com slash RTA free gift. Because you stayed to the end of the video, you get a free gift, and you can uh, get a book, you can get learn about our training. And we're here to help you by providing source code, providing training. I've got a white paper you can get on SIP security. I've got an Ethernet IP book that right now doesn't include SIP security, but it will in the short in the in, in the next few months. And then we're going to have some, uh, uh, some modules and PCBs that you can put inside of your device that will help you with SIP security. So this is the first video in a number of videos I'm going to do on SIP security. This was just an overview. The next ones will be a little more detail for all of you out there who need to know about this important new technology. Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.